Looking for a painting tutorial for beginners? By the end of this video, I'll show you exactly how to paint this vibrant and colorful snow cone. For all the best lessons on painting a vibrant color with acrylics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. So last year, I created a series of paintings with Boston area interior designers Honey and Fitz based on our most favorite, nostalgic, and iconic summer treats. So we took foods like snow cones and cotton candy and rocket pops and turned each one of them into their own painting. So I love of painting nostalgic and iconic foods because they're all related to memories and stories, right? You look at something like that, like a snow cone or a rocket pop, and instantly it transports you back to this awesome time, maybe a story with someone that you love, and I love that feeling. So today I'm going to break down step by step how I created my snow cone painting. So follow along, and if you need the full materials list, that is below this video. So let's dive in. All right, so in this step by step tutorial, like I said, we are going to be painting a snow cone. So you can follow along with me, either paint along while you're watching the video or watch the video first and then test it out, whatever you wanna do. So I have us all set up here. I've got all of my paints, I've put them out on the palette. I'm using Quinacridone Magenta, Pyrrole Orange, uh, Yellow Medium, Yellow Light, Thalo Turquoise, Thalo Blue, Dioxazine Purple and Titanium White. Um, if you do want my full list of recommended materials, you can download that below this video, um, but We'll just jump right in and I'll walk you through everything that I'm doing. So I already have our snow cone outlined here. It's just outlined in pencil. I'm using 140 pound watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is just great. It's meant to absorb the water, obviously, so it won't warp too much as we paint on it. Um, so I recommend getting that. And then I've got my brushes over here. I'll show you the brushes I'm using as I'm using them. So. Step number one is gonna to be to outline our snow cone with paint. So we already have a pencil outline, but I like to do a paint outline as well, just so we know kinda of where we're going and getting started. So I'm gonna do that with magenta. Nice, vibrant color. And I just wanna do this part fairly quickly. Like there's no huge rush here, but I also don't wanna go super slow. I wanna get into the fun part of color mixing. Magenta is just a nice vibrant color. Everything I'm doing is always with the intention of making vibrant paintings and colors that glow. And magenta is a really, really great vibrant color. So I'm just gonna start with that. And just outline this ridge of that cone, like the lip of the cone. And then bring this right down here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're not really trying to make like a coloring book. We're just trying to outline so we have a nice color peeking through. So, all right, there we go. And we're gonna leave the background white for this painting. It just gives like a nice iconic bright look to the whole thing. So we're gonna switch to a bigger brush to start. I'm gonna go with this brush here. These are Princeton Catalyst brushes. Those are on my list of recommended materials too. You'll see those. Um, and the first thing we wanna do is just establish the rainbow in the snow cone, right? Which is pretty fun. So we're gonna go from left to right, starting with the reds and magentas all the way to the purples. So I'm gonna take the magenta first. You wanna make sure you're using enough paint. If you're not using enough paint, it's gonna be hard to blend. And we're just gonna blend right across. One really good trick for painting in general is that colors that are next to each other on, in the rainbow are always gonna blend really nicely without making mud. So I don't need to worry that it's gonna get muddy because these colors are next to each other in the rainbow. Then we can go straight into yellow and we just wanna blend this first. We're starting a little darker than we think we need to go, but that's gonna make it so we can see our highlights really easily as we keep going. So I am gonna wash the brush now so that we can get a nice clean yellow. I do have a water cup over here as well as a paper towel right here so I can just keep drying off the brushes. You don't really wanna thin your paint out with water. You're not gonna see me do that very often. The only time I like to do that is when it's the very first layer sometimes if I want that watercolor look. But for the most part, really wanna make sure your brushes are dry. Okay, so now we're gonna come in with our yellow light. I like to use two different types of yellow. One is a little bit warmer, one's a little bit cooler. It's just a personal preference. I'm gonna bring this right into the middle. 
And you'll notice too, I'm just blending a little bit. The lines don't have to be perfect. And now we're gonna blend this right into my phthalo turquoise, which is actually a mix of phthalo green and phthalo blue. It's really bright. I like to use it to mix my own greens. And then it's gonna blend really nicely and really easily right into our blue. You can see green and blue next to each other on the color wheel blend really nicely. If I still had magenta on the brush, it would not be quite as nice. I'm gonna come back with a little bit of green. And we don't wanna blend green and purple, so I'm gonna dry the, or, uh, wash the brush off one more time. And I'm gonna come in with a little bit more phthalo blue and then come in with our dioxazine purple. It's just a nice, beautiful, strong purple right over here. Okay, and now we've got our basic rainbow for the snow cone. So I know it's really dark. This is just to help us create some depth right from the beginning. And I do wanna bring a little bit of the blue back. I think we lost a little bit of that and bring back some of our blue. All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to a slightly smaller brush. I'm gonna go with this brush now so we can do the first layers of the cone. So with the cone too, we also wanna start a little bit darker. These are like those white paper cones. You can probably like feel it in your hand just thinking about like a nostalgic snow cone, but we're not gonna be able to get a white highlight on it if we leave it white now. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take some of our white here and I think I wanna make it like a purpley pink color. So I'm gonna take some of this purple that we had right up here and then I'm gonna add some magenta. You'll notice I'm using magenta instead of red. That just makes a much brighter, makes brighter purples, brighter oranges. So that's why I like to do that. So I'm just gonna bring this right in here. This is kind of like the seam where that paper is wrapped around, you know? And so that this doesn't look like a solid block, I'm gonna take in a little bit more magenta and just mix on the paper here. So we just get a little bit more variation so it doesn't look like a coloring book. All right, bring it down. And it's okay that we're painting over those, those outlines we did before. They're still peeking through a little bit. Bring this here. And then go right underneath. All right. You can see I'm moving pretty quickly. I don't wanna get super, super hung up in what I'm doing so I can just keep moving forward. Now I'm gonna do this top area where it's kind of folded down. And now we've got our basic snow cone first layers. So you'll see the paper is warping a little bit. That is totally okay. It's not a big deal. Most of the time, if you get high enough quality watercolor paper, as it dries, it will flatten itself back out a little bit. But even if it doesn't, that's okay. It's not a big deal if the paper is warping a little bit. You can also do this on canvas if you want to, uh, canvas pad, whatever you want to do. So we just are going to let this kind of dry for just a second. Acrylics dry fairly quickly. Um, so while that's happening, we'll clean off our brush over here. If your water starts to get like super muddy or super gray, you can definitely change the water. Sometimes I'll even have two cups of water, one for rinsing off warm colors and one for cool colors so they don't get too, too muddy. But the next thing I'm thinking about doing is we want to create that icy pattern, right? We don't just want it to look like a rainbow block on top of a triangle, we want it to have dimension. So the way we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna go back over each of the sections by adding white to all of the rainbow sections and bringing it to life. So I'll show you exactly how we're gonna do that. 
And we are gonna go back to that bigger brush we started with. So I'm gonna make sure that's nice and dry. And I'm gonna take some white. So I'm gonna take some of our magenta down here. And if I need to add more colors to the palette, I will. Also notice the colors are on the palette in rainbow order. And they're also like about an inch away from each other just so I have space to mix them intentionally and they're not sitting on top of each other. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white over here, a little bit of orange just to make it a little more red. And now I'm gonna go in with the side of my brush and kind of give it that icy look with just some of those bigger shapes on top of the background. So we want some of that transparent background peeking through. So it looks like ice chips on top of it. We want it to stand out. So if you need to add a little bit more white, you can. Move the brush around really lightly. Experiment with adding different amounts of orange, different amounts of yellow. All you want is for this next layer to be a little bit lighter and a little bit brighter than the first layer. So it looks like this. It's fun to experiment with the different sides of your brush too. You'll start to see that the same brush can do a lot of different things. I really don't like to teach that this brush is for this thing or like this brush is for a cloud and this brush is for a sky. They can all do different things. If you watch enough of my videos, you're gonna hear me say what I'm about to say a million times, which is that your paintbrushes are like the knives in your kitchen. They can do multiple things. All of them can do multiple things, but you wanna use the best knife for the most appropriate job, right? Like. You want to use a small knife to cut small things and a large knife to cut big things and your paint brushes are the same. They can all do multiple things, but you want to use your bigger brushes for bigger areas like backgrounds, bigger shapes, and you want to use your small brushes for small details and smaller shapes. So your brushes are like the knives in your kitchen. <laughs> you will hear me say that again and again and again and again. I should make a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. So just drying it off in between and then keeping on going. And if you have to add more paint to your palette, you can. Better to start with just a little bit and you can always add more than to end up with like huge blobs of paint that you're not using. So I'm gonna bring this yellow down. And don't be afraid to mix back into the paint you were using. And it's okay too if the shapes of your snow cones start to move around a little bit doesn't have to stay in perfect lines. Like when you get a snow cone, it doesn't look perfect, right? Some of the colors bleed into each other. We just wanna get that nice icy color. And if we pull a little bit of the orange over, that is okay. Bring a little bit of that white. Sometimes the white on the palette gets a little messy. I try to keep that to the sides so that when we do our cool colors, I'll be able to get some clean white out of there. And experiment, Make maybe let's see what happens when I just put the brush down this way. That makes a cool icy pattern too. So now we're gonna keep on going over here. And now we're gonna keep on going. You can already see we're getting that nice icy pattern. It's starting to definitely feel like a snow cone. So onward. And you can experiment with different brushes too. Like maybe I'll grab a similar shape brush, but this one's a little bit softer. This is just a, just a Blick brush. You don't need fancy brushes. I always will recommend if you're gonna splurge on one thing, make it your paints. Higher quality paints make a huge difference. They really, really do. And again, you can download my list of the ones that I love below this video. All right, so we've still got some more ice to do. 
and we'll add some more yellow. Sometimes when you want something to look really bright and you're adding white, it'll start to look pale. So you can always experiment with adding yellow instead. So adding yellow to this green is making it a lighter green. It's also making it a brighter green. Now we can add a little bit of white too. Maybe we need to go back towards yellow a little bit. Don't be afraid to just bring lots of color into what you're doing. Wipe off this brush. You can use paper towels. You can use, I have a little rag here. You can cut up old t-shirts and use those as rags too. I'm gonna put a little more blue down. The blue is really strong, so I like to just put a little bit down at a time. This is phthalo blue, phthalo anything. Super, super strong. All right, take our blue, maybe even a little bit of turquoise. Add some white. And it's okay if it blends in with what's next to it a little bit. You just want to make sure you can see some of that dark blue peeking through in the back. That's what gives that depth. If we were to just do these shapes right over a white background like that, you'd be able to see straight through. It wouldn't have that depth. So that's why it's so important to start darker than you think you need. We can always add a little bit of white if we need to do more. And we're going to go back over it again for even more. Okay, and now do some purple, add some more white. All right, and get these ice chunks back here and you could do whatever you want if you wanted your whole thing to be red if you want it to be like red yellow and blue you can do as much or as little of a rainbow as you want so that is great for the first round of lighter values now we're going to go back down to the cone so what we're going to do is i'm going to take this brush that i already have i'm going to wash it off a little bit to get a lot of that blue off since it is really strong Make sure it's nice and dry. Again, still using a pretty big brush. Not gonna use a small brush until later. I'm gonna take some white, mix it in with the color I was using before, this pink, taking a little bit at a time. You can see how slowly I do my color mixing. Taking just a little color, take the darker color, mix it into the lighter color. And start to lighten it up a little bit and one way to add a lot of dimension and depth is to decide where your light source is coming from and make it look like something is really glowing so I think I'm gonna use I'm gonna have the light look like it's coming from the left so we'll make the left side lighter than the right side and you'll see this come together filling this in lightening it up a little bit Just making those good layers. Not blending everything perfectly. You really don't have to blend everything perfectly. I think when paintings have more texture and they're less blended, they honestly have more movement. They seem a little bit more like lively and exciting. So I try to practice not blending everything and I encourage you to do the same. Most of my students get really hung up on needing to blend everything and I just don't, there's no reason for that. All right. So you can see we're having the left side still be a little lighter. And 
And then going around the top one more time, flattening this out. Fade it into slightly darker. There we go. So now it's really coming together. It's starting to have some dimension. It's starting to really pop and come to life, even though it's super vibrant colors. You don't have to choose. It doesn't have to be either vibrant colors and like, I don't know, illustrative or flat and fine art and photorealistic. You can have dimension and fun colors at the same time. So let's let that dry for a second so we don't mush it around too much. And let's go back to the top and make it look even icier. So now I can use this brush. It has a lot of magenta on it or some magenta on it from being blended in with the purple. So I'm gonna take it up here. And now I'm gonna go even lighter. And now I'm gonna find where I want those biggest kind of chunks of ice to be. And I'll link to a Pinterest board that has some good reference photos for you guys if you wanna look at a photo while you're doing this too. So just doing the same thing, going around, making it lighter. We're, we'll use our yellow trick again, add a little yellow to that orange. It's gonna make it feel like slightly lighter orange too. And just doing some somewhat random ice chunks, right? Ice chips. <laughs> make it look like the light's really hitting it. And if you need to wipe it off, I'm wearing an apron. You can always just kind of wipe off excess paint on your apron if you need to. Bring some yellow in. And just make sure it's nice and light. And just do some of those bigger chunks of ice. It can be random. And I think I do want to go back and add some that are more magenta, like right over here. This is the part where you have to be a little brave, a little willing to just put down a brush stroke without blending it in. I think that when you're first starting painting, there's just a tendency to want to just keep blending because it just kind of feels not easy, but something simple that's like, well, if I just keep blending this, I can't like mess up the rest of the painting. You have to be a little brave to keep moving around the painting and not blend stuff in. All right, so I'll use some more ice chips over here. And imagine, like we said, we're gonna pretend that the light's coming from the left side. So maybe this side has some more ice chips. Turning my brush sideways So I make even like smaller ice chip looking shapes here. Just something a little bit varied. Maybe even pick up a little more orange, do some small ones down here. And we can make small shapes with a big brush. It's kind of cool. So, okay, now we're gonna go back. We'll keep going with the green and you can see it's really coming to life. It has dimension. It's making me nostalgic. So if you uh, have a nostalgic snow cone memory to share with us, tell me in a comment. I love hearing people's stories. I paint a lot of food because foods, certain foods remind me of happy memories or family members or time in my life. And I love hearing the stories that people share with me. Sometimes they'll see my work and say, oh my God, like that reminds me of this time. I was a little kid. I was at this carnival or whatever. and. It was his best memory and I love hearing stuff like that. So if you have a snow cone memory, let me know, I wanna hear. All right, so gonna lighten this up even more, add some blue, blue ice over here. And again, turning my brush to the side as we get to the bottom. And then we can add a little yellow to go back towards green. That's the cool thing too, like once you understand 
the rainbow and what colors make what, you can go back and forth without making mud because you know what's going to work. All right, so some green. And you can see I'm touching very lightly, letting them just be like big shapes. Just want to make sure it's there's all different values, right? Which means like lightness and darkness. So we want dark greens, we want middle greens, we want light greens. We might need a little more yellow in here. So wash off our brush. I'm just gonna get a new brush for time's sake. Bring in a little bit more of our yellow here. Maybe even just bring in a little bit more yellow just so we get, we kind of lost a little bit of that middle yellow color. We can just go right in with that. Awesome. And now we'll go and get our purple. And you see pretty quickly our awesome snow cone is coming together. Dry it off. Take a little purple, some white. Might need a little more white. <laughs> and you know the drill, same thing. Bigger, bigger shapes. If you want, we could even add a little bit of magenta, make it look like it's kind of fading back to red again. All right. Wipe off some of the excess paint. And we'll just take even more white, just make an extra light purple over here just to get super light. All right, and now, let that dry a little bit. We have layered on a bunch of paint. We want to make sure that our cone is as three-dimensional as it could be. And the best way to do that is gonna to be to add even more white as a highlight. So towards the end of a painting, I like to make sure that I have enough dark darks and light lights, a good range of values. So I'm gonna take some white, it's kind of messy over here, but see if I can dig out some clean white over here. And I want to add a little bit of extra white over here, just like a white highlight close to the edge, but not touching it, just so it looks like it has some light hitting it here. Bring this over. You can slightly blend it in without going crazy. And then with a nice flat square brush, flattened out on the canvas, or the palette paper, excuse me. I'm gonna bring in a bright white highlight for the top as well. Just so it's nice and bright. Bring it around the other side too. And maybe even this paper fold comes forward a little bit. Maybe that catches some light too. Add a little bit of white there. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we've got some white highlights where the ice is. That's what's gonna make it look wet and icy. So I'm gonna grab some more pure white, same brush, and very loosely and lightly because a lot of this is still wet, I'm gonna go over and add the brightest white. So maybe right here. 
And this is really subtle, but it's just a really great way to make everything look even more three-dimensional. So you don't want to do it everywhere, just a couple of well-placed white highlights. And if you need more pure white, go get some more pure white. Doing it mostly on the top. It is a sphere, right? So we want to make sure it looks like it's the lights hitting that top area and maybe even a couple more white highlights over here since we have our fake light coming from this left side. And then just a couple random ones down at the bottom. All right. And then what we can do to finish up is we can switch to a smaller brush. I know a lot of you guys like to use the smaller brushes right away, but you gotta wait till towards the end to use the smaller detail brushes. So you can grab some pure white with a smaller detail brush and just do like some small, small little ice chips and groups. You can do it towards the bottom, you can do it towards the top too to make it just look a little bit more varied. Just bring that in a little bit. Just some little tiny ice chips, but I want you to notice how much we were able to paint with a bigger brush, right? We don't need the tiny brush until the end. If you really want to, you can add a little extra, like a highlight down the side, if you want, I don't know, make it look like it's catching the light. Can't resist a well-placed highlight. And then once you're happy with your last highlights, your snow cone is all done. And you, in about 30 minutes, have created your very own snow cone. You'll always see I get, <laughs> I get a little excited about details at the end, but that's it. So now I wanna hear from you. Tell me in a comment below one thing you learned from this video about painting with vibrant color. And to dive deeper into my painting process, I wanna invite you to sign up for my online painting workshops. In those workshops, I break down my exact process that I use for every single one of my paintings into bite-sized details so you can follow along and paint exactly like I do. So sign up for those workshops with the link below this video. And again, if you need the full materials list, you can find that in the link below this video too. If you like this tutorial, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your color-loving friends. And if you want to brush up on the basics of painting with vibrant color, check out my color wheel video right here. And I will see you in the next video.